guys, today we will talk about the Rapier Bleed build, which is considered by many the best DPS build in New World for PvE. As well as I'm playing this build for over two seasons now, I will share with you my experience, tips and tricks, and of course the blade itself with all the attributes, skill points, and of course the perks for the armors and weapons needed. First of all, we will have to look at what does the rapier scale off and what could be a potential combination for a secondary weapon. As we all know, rapier scales from dexterity and intelligence, so there are quite a few weapons which will be possible combination for the rapier in PvE. However, there are many debates about what is the best secondary weapon for a rapier and most people tend to believe that the best combination comes down to Ice Gauntlet. Of course, I will not go into details why that's the case, but in general, the Ice Gauntlet provides quite a huge AoE damage with its Storm and Pylon abilities, and of course, it can also provide Rent, which will be beneficial for the whole party. Of course, in many dungeons, you can change the Pylon to Spike, and this is mainly dependent on the amount of mobs that are in the dungeon. The rapier main damage for this build comes down from the bleed dot effects. Since there is no mitigation for the type of damage which is the bleed, we can simply say that this is considered a true damage. In order to understand how that works and how to maximize the damage plus the bleed dot effects, we have to look in the following below combo. In the build of the bleed rapier, there are two abilities which are applying the bleed effects. Those are the Tondo and the Flurry. The maximum stack of bleeds on a target could be maximized up to 3 and the maximum duration of bleed can only be up to 20 seconds. This means that if we make a combo between Tondo, Flurry and again Tondo or Flurry, Tondo and Flurry, we will achieve the maximum stacks of 3 on a certain target. However, important thing is to mention that whenever you apply a bleed stack to an enemy, the previous bleed effects or previous bleed dots will reapply again for another 20 seconds of duration. Example could be given as such. If we apply a tondo to a target and the duration of it is 20 seconds, after 10 seconds applying another tondo or another flurry bleed, will re-enable the first bleed and it will start again from 0 to 20 seconds. This is really important and crucial because what we're gonna look at next is the flourish and finish which is the main source of consuming the bleeds and of course providing this high burst that we are talking about. As we can see in the description of the flourish and finish ability, there is 120% thrust damage applied whenever we hit a target but on top of this damage, there is another 110% of all bleed effects on the target which will be consumed immediately dealing this high burst of damage. However, if we want to extend even further, looking down into the ultimate ability of the blood tree, which is bloody end, this 110% are now increased to 150% to the bleed damage applied. As you can imagine, the bleed damage up from 150% can be really high and this is mainly the reason why the bleed rapier is considered the best DPS in PvE. There is of course something really important which we have to mention and that's the way that we have to achieve the maximum duration of bleeds. In order to have the highest burst possible, we want to have always an extended bleed effects. There are three key sources for that and of course those are the 150 decks which will provide us with 15% duration to overtime effects. Then we have the 250 intelligence which will provide us 30% duration to apply damage over time effects. And of course last but not least the bloodletting perk on the ring which will provide a 32% increase to all bleed effects on the target. Before going over the needed gear with the perks and attributes, I would like to show you guys how you should combo with the rapier and how to maximize the empower of your bleeds. For those who don't know, the bleed will do more damage per second and also more damage overall if we are under empower effect. If at the time when we are applying a bleed we have an empower cap of 50%, 
it would not make a difference if we have weakened effects or we don't have any empower at all whenever we consume all the dots with flourish and finish. This means that we should be aiming to be at maximum HP whenever we apply bleed effects due to the fact that the diamond gem will provide us a 15% increased damage. Also, we should be watching out around for teammates in powers such as Oblivion so we can provide more damage to our bleed effects. As previously mentioned, there are two combos for the rapier which we can use to get the maximum of bleed stacks in short amount of time. On the bottom right corner you can see both of them on a target dummy. The first one is Tondo Flurry Tondo which is the easier one to do and doesn't require that much of optimized gear. The second one is Flurry Tondo Flurry which will deal overall better damage but require precise execution and necessary refreshing perks and passives. And now since we already know the most important things related to the bleed Let's take a look on how we can increase our damage output, duration and bleeds and of course the overall performance with the bleed build. First of all we will take a look at the weapons. Without a doubt the best rapier to have is the artifact finisher which is an insanely strong rapier. For last perk of choice we would like to have the keenly empowered in order to keep our empower level high at all times. For ice gauntlet there are two options that we might take. The first one is including the spike build and of course we would like to have spike, vicious and for third perk you can choose between attunement, keenly jacked or keenly empowered. For the other build that is including the pylon we would like to have the pylon perk, vicious and either attunement or keenly jacked. For the armors our goal is to get the nimble coat which is the medium chest piece artifact. This chest piece will provide us an extra 8% of refreshing which will directly affect our build and it will increase our damage output. For all other pieces of armor we would like to have the perk leeching flurry which will guarantee our sustain in fights. Possible but not mandatory perks could also be the storm perk for the ice gauntlet which is called unending toe as this will be increasing your damage of the ice storm directly. The other perk that you might use is Deadly Frost which is a perk that provides a small dot of damage to all targets affected by the Ice Shower. Of course we would like to have 4 out of 4 refreshing perks in all of our gear but this as well can be split between the armors and the jewelry. Speaking of jewelry your best amulet to choose is health elemental protection depending on the mutation and of course for last perk you can choose by yourself. Good perks for a third amulet perk can be refreshing, divine or empower. For ring the best 3 perks to have is hearty, bloodletting and leeching. However if you feel really safe and you can maintain the 100% HP at all times you can go also with trust damage on the place of leeching. Last but not least for earring the 3 good perks would be refreshing toast, refreshing and beloved. However, if your tank is amazing at keeping aggro, you can replace the beloved with purifying toast. For heart rune, without a doubt the best heart rune that you can use is still the detonate as it will not affect your animations while hitting but keep in mind that due to the latest nerfs you're gonna be rendered for 50% while charging it. Therefore you have to be really careful when you are using it and of course the bleed stacks will apply so many hits that it will recharge super fast. Looking at the skill tree of both weapons starting with the rapier we would want to have Tondo, Flourish and Finish and of course Flurry. All the passives on both sides of the tree are related to damage or cooldown reduction. For the ice gauntlet as we said we have two different options. The first one is the spike so the skill tree will be spike, ice storm and of course ice shower and for the other which is using the pylon we would want to have storm, ice shower and pylon. The last thing that we have to take a look at and maybe the most important one is the attribute split which we will need for this build. Personally I'm using 50 constitution just for that small extra sustain and a bit stronger potion usage. However if you trust your teammates and you want to keep the dream alive for the glass cannon build I still believe that going 5 con is possible. 
The remaining attribute points I prefer to split equally in both dexterity and intelligence. The reason for that is mainly because of magnify, but also after some testing I found out that the best damage that I get is with 276 dexterity and 275 intelligence. So with that guys, I think I've covered the most important things related to the bleed build of the rapier in the PvE of New World. In case you have any questions, please make sure to ask them in the comment section or simply join my Discord community where we can discuss a lot of different topics related to New World but not only. If you want to catch me live, you can also follow me on Kick, where I stream regularly with a schedule. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.